So in this next video, I'm going to show you how to set up your electrophoresis chamber um, and then prepare your samples and then load them and run the gel. So pretty much it's parts three, four, and five um, of your protocol. We've already finished part one and two. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my electrophoresis chamber set up. And again, I'm going to wear my gloves. Okay, and so this is what an electrophoresis chamber looks like. Hold it up like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our gel right here on this block. Okay, and I'm going to make sure that my wells, when I put them in, so my comb right now, I'm going to take my comb out eventually, but my comb, I'm going to make sure sits right here on this red line. And then I'm going to pour electrophoresis buffer in here, load my gel, put the cap, the cover on, and then I'm going to plug it into my electrical source and I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And um, what's going to happen is current is going to be applied and it's going to run from the negative electrode towards the positive. So my negative electrode is up here and my positive electrode is down here. Okay, and so what's gonna happen? So I'm gonna have um, charge coming in, okay, current coming in from my power source and it's going to be running in this direction from negative to positive. And when you think about it, think about the charge on DNA. DNA, because of those phosphate groups, has an overall charge that is negative. So we say that DNA is negatively charged. So naturally, DNA is going to run towards the positive electrode. So it's going to be pulled by this current, pushed and pulled, um, in this direction down towards the current. And as it's pushed down, remember this gel that we're going to be loading our DNA sample on, it acts as a molecular sieve. And so as the DNA runs down the gel, the smaller the fragment, the farther it's going to be able to travel or migrate in that agarose gel. So the larger the fragment, the less it's going to migrate. And so we're going to end up with a banding pattern. Now we're not going to actually see it on the gel right now because DNA is colorless. So when we're finished running this, the last step, the last video that you're going to see is the staining of the gel. Okay, and so we're going to use a stain that binds to DNA and it's actually going to appear blue when we put it onto a background of light. Okay, so again, DNA is negatively charged. Once we get it on here, it's going to run towards the positive electrode. Okay, and as it does that, smaller fragments are going to be able to travel farther in the gel. Okay, so here is my gel. And they both came out really good. I'm gonna actually use this one, this one that's a little bit better. Okay, now before I go ahead and put my gel on here, I have to first remove the tape. <laughs> That's a mistake sometimes that students make and they say, why isn't my DNA moving? It, it, what's going on here? The tape's on. Okay, so we're going to make sure and we're going to remove the tape from both ends. That was just there to hold it in, um, to hold the um, agarose in as we poured it and it solidified. Now we don't have to worry about it because it's, it's solidified. It's still kind of gelatinous, but it's definitely not a liquid anymore. Okay, it's a gel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my gel into my gel box. Hopefully, yeah. And again, I'm going to line the wells up, I'm going to tilt this to the side, on that red line. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this with some buffer. So I've got my TAE buffer here. I actually, it's a little bit more dilute. I had to add a little bit more water um, because we need a little bit of a different concentration. This is a 0.25 percent instead of or 0.25 x instead of 1x solution so it's a little bit more dilute than what we use for the gel I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour this buffer in and I'm gonna pour it on both sides of my chamber and I'm gonna make sure that I cover my gel up to about the top of this sticker about a quarter to a half an inch above the gel okay so again I've got a beaker because I like I like how the beaker has um, uh, the pouring that lip there where we can pour from. Okay, and I'm just holding my gel down with my finger just so it doesn't start to float up. Okay. And I'm gonna fill both sides of my chamber. Again, this buffer is going to allow current to flow through it. And a little bit more. 
think that's good. Okay. Okay. So again, I had my backup gel and my backup samples just in case, but I think we're going to be okay. I think running one is going to be fine. So again, I'm going to make sure that my comb is lined up there on those red lines. And the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull my comb out. And what I'm going to be left with are depressions where I'm going to go ahead and load my DNA sample into. So I'm going to make sure that I pull straight up right now, not at an angle at all. I don't want to rip any of those wells. Yeah, very nice. Okay. So I want to show you what I just did um, using, let me take my gloves off just so that it's easier, using this other gel since we're not going to use it. So again, I'm going to take the tape off. Actually, I'm just going to take the tape off this one side. I want to show you what this looks like when I pull the, the comb out. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull straight up. And you can see, hopefully, do you see those little depressions there? Those are wells. That's where I'm going to be loading my DNA sample into. So notice that there's eight wells here. I'm only going to be using seven of them because I have my, right, I have my crime scene. Oh, I have, first I'm going to put my ladder DNA in the first lane. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then um, in my next second lane, I'm going to put the crime scene and then followed by suspects one through five. So that's five, six, that's seven samples of DNA. Um, actually, I might run two of, um, of my ladder since I have a lot of it. So I actually might run in lane one and lane eight, my ladder DNA. I think I will. Um, so before I go on, let's talk about this ladder DNA really quickly. And you probably, you, you heard about it in the intro video and there was a little bit of writing about it um, um, in one of the handouts that I put on Blackboard for you. But what that ladder uh, DNA does, again, I'm going to, I would load it in my first well here. And that's your standard, your marker DNA, which means that all of the other DNA on this gel is going to be compared to that first lane. So you're going to make a graph, and the graph is going to be made using this first lane. This is going to be DNA, fragmented DNA, that we know the size of the fragments. And so you can use the distance migrated and the fragment size, and you are going to create a graph from that data. And then based on that graph, you are going to be able to determine the size of the fragments in every other lane on this gel. Okay? And there's a video telling you how to do that. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and watch that video before you... Before you um, uh, finish your data report. Okay, so again, in this first lane, I'm going to load, it's called the HIND3 marker DNA or the HIND3 digest. This is DNA of known fragment size. It's going into the first lane. And again, we're going to use this first lane um, as our standard, as our marker DNA. Okay, I haven't decided. I don't know if I'm going to put it in the first and last or just the first. Um, we'll think about it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here for just a second, and then once our samples are done, that's about, we got about 10 more minutes, I'm going to go ahead and start recording, loading the samples onto the gel. Okay. Okay, so our incubation is up. I'm just going to move our gel box over a little bit. And so I have my tubes. And I'm just going to do this now with one set since I didn't screw anything up. I have my other set though right here just in case anything goes wrong. Um, so we did part three uh, and now we're going to move on to part four. So now we're going to prepare these samples for gel electrophoresis. So before we load them, we still have a couple more things to do. You'll notice that if you look at these tubes in the bottom, I can see that liquid down there, but it's, it's clear. It's colorless. Well, DNA is colorless. Enzymes clear, colorless when in solution. And so what we're going to do to our six DNA samples here, and I've already done this to our um, marker or ladder DNA, standard DNA, which is going in lane one, well one. I've already um, added loading dye to this. So in this tube right here, there's this blue dye called loading dye. This doesn't stain DNA. So we're not staining our DNA with this. Instead, we're going to add this to each tube. I think we're adding yet five microliters to each tube. 
We're going to mix it and then we're going to spin it again in our micro centrifuge before we load it. But what this does is it's a dye which is going to run with your sample. Again, it doesn't stain DNA, but we it's going to allow us to know really when to turn the gel off, okay, to stop running it. Um, without this dye, we wouldn't know when the gel was finished. So we're going to watch this dye migrate down our gel. And when it gets to about a quarter to a half an inch from the edge, okay, so if this is our gel, we're going to watch that dye. We're going to put our DNA with dye in it in the wells, right? And so each well represents a lane. And as the DNA moves down its lane, the dye is going to move with it. When the dye gets to about here, we're going to know to turn the gel off, to turn that power source right off. Okay, so it's a mechanism that we use in order for us to know when the gel is done running. Again, it's called loading dye. So we're going to add about five microliters of this to each tube. Again, I'm going to mix um, the DNA up with the loading dye, and then I'm going to flick and spin to collect everything down to the bottom. Okay, so I've got my micro pipette again, and it was set to 10, so I've got to change that. So I'm going to spin this down to five. So we're adding five microliters of loading dye to each tube. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my tubes open. I should move these over here so I'm not breathing on them. So one, two. Oh, I forgot my gloves. You should really wear gloves in this part, right? Uh, only because you don't want your DNA or any of your enzymes from your skin to end up in these DNA tubes. So if you were in a forensic research lab or in a crime scene lab, you definitely want to wear gloves. Okay, now this is my loading die, so I'll take the cap off. Again, I'm going to change my tip of my pipette in between each tube. I'm going to go ahead and grab five microliters of loading dye. This is nice because so you can see it. Look at the tip there. That's five microliters. Really not much, right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to get my tip down into the bottom of my tube here. And I'm going to add it right to where that liquid is. And I'm just going to draw up and down to kind of mix it. Hopefully it's all mixed in there. And then I'm gonna change my tip. So there's my crime scene tube. Before I put it back, I'm just gonna kind of flick the bottom. You can see that's getting nice and mixed. And I'm gonna put it in my centrifuge so it's ready to roll. Okay, here's my second tube. Okay, same thing, I'm gonna mix it. Get rid of my tip. Close my tube, flick it, put it in the centrifuge. Third tube. Okay. Molecular biology is a little bit tedious. Lots of tubes, lots of tips, lots of small amounts of liquid. But the end results are so cool. And the what you can do with molecular biology is so neat. Revolutionizing medicine, phylogenetics, uh, how we think about crop production. It's really revolutionizing biology as a science. Okay. Two more samples to go. I don't think I'll pause it just because we're almost there. I pulled that out kind of fast. I had to make sure I had it. That's a common mistake. You pull the tip out before you actually pull anything up, and then you don't end up with anything in your sample. And I've definitely done that before. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. If we were actually in the lab, we would have spent some time last week in lab actually practicing with these pipettes so that you guys would become, oh, almost pros. Can't learn it really in a week, but we, we use these a couple weeks in a row usually in the lab. So you become kind of, kind of good at it. Okay, so flick, and now we're just gonna spin. So let me cap our loading die, and we're done with this. So I'm gonna actually put it right out of our way. Yeah, okay, I wanna make sure I get rid of the, the right tube. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, close my centrifuge top 
spin my samples down for just a couple seconds. Pop it back out, actually. Use this again. Okay. And again, I want to slowly, actually, I might spin for one more second. Some of these look like there's still some liquid on the sides of the tube. I don't want anything on the sides of the tube. I want everything in the bottom so that whatever I'm grabbing to load on my gel, it contains DNA and loading dye. Hopefully fragmented DNA. Hopefully our enzyme worked and our DNA is fragmented. Okay. Okay. So I can go ahead and I can grab my samples out. So I'll try to do them in order. So my crime scene, I think, was orange. No, I'm wrong. <laughs> that was suspect two. Crime scene was green. Okay. So again, I want to be really careful not to disturb the liquid at the bottom of my, my tubes. And they're in there pretty tight. Okay. Try to keep them in order so that when I go to load them on my gel, I don't screw up the order which would screw up my results, right? Okay, so I'm done with that for now. Now I'm gonna load these onto my gel and it's gonna be a little bit difficult because I'm not an expert at using the camera and so it might be difficult for you to see what's happening. So I kept my other gel, I didn't get rid of it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you me loading, um, some just loading dye. Um, and I'm gonna change my micro pipette to 10 microliters, right? Because in the next part here, which is part five. It says loading samples and electrophoresis. So when I load my samples, I'm gonna be loading 10 microliters of each sample, using a fresh pipette tip every time, loading them right into the wells on my gel, okay? Now again, I, you can't see in here very well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get it as best as I can, but I've got my other gel here that I'm just gonna show you what it looks like to load. So I'm going to just take some of that loading dye, it's extra, and I'm going to take 10 microliters of it, which is only that much. It's really not much there, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I'm going to load this. And this is tricky. This takes some practice. I actually like to stand usually when I'm doing this and get everything out of my way. And I like to put my elbow down and then I like to guide my arm with my other hand. And you're gonna take the tip and you're gonna put it into the well and you are going to push down on that tip. And there's no buffer in here, so it's not gonna be perfect. And you're gonna push that liquid in and then get rid of the tip. And so I just loaded my sample into my first well on this, on this gel that I'm not actually gonna use, okay? So loading samples, again, I'll do my second one on here. It takes some practice. And again, if we were doing this in a live lab, if you guys were actually here with me, we would do this first on a practice gel, okay? And again, there's my sample, okay? Um, the key thing when you're loading it on here is you don't want any loading dye or DNA to be kind of floating out. You want to try to get it really into that well, nice and deep, without ripping the well. Um, and I've got to adjust this really quick. So, okay, so I just made sure that my gel was still lined up correctly. I'm going to try to bring my gel box a little bit closer to the camera. Okay, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my samples onto our gel putting a sample into each well, and hopefully that angle is okay. You can see a little bit of what I'm doing. So the first sample I'm gonna use is my marker DNA, my standard. Remember, this is gonna be the DNA that we know the restriction fragment sizes. So we're gonna be putting this in the, in the first lane, the first well, which is our first lane. And um, after we are looking at our gels, after we stain them, we will uh, compare everything really to this first lane. So that we're going to be using this first lane uh, to when we make our graph. Let me get a different one. Let's try that again. Okay, there, I got enough sample. So again, I'm going to carefully load this into my first well. OK, 
Okay, I had to be really quiet for that one. <laughs> I did good. So again, I got DNA into my first well. A little bit came out. Um, not too much though, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to put my crime scene DNA into my next lane. Okay, so again, I'm grabbing, I got a fresh tip. Grabbing 10 microliters out of my tube. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this into my second well. Yeah, good. Okay. I'm changing my tip in between each sample. And again, it takes a pretty steady hand to do this. Um, and so this is suspect one. He's going in lane three. And again, what we're trying to figure out here is do any of our suspect DNA fingerprints or profiles, do any of them match our crime scene DNA profile? Again, we're going to look at these just with our eyes when we finish staining them. And we'll make some assumptions and then we'll do some measurements to see if those assumptions were correct. And in forensics, they, they take this a little bit further um, than we are. But we're just really, just want to introduce you to what DNA fingerprinting is. So I've got suspect three. Okay, pretty good. My hand is steady today. Suspect four. Again, I'm gonna have one lane, one well, that I'm not putting any DNA into. That's gonna be the last one. I thought about putting the marker DNA in there, but I don't think I'm going to. Now I've got suspect five. Here's our last suspect. It's gonna go right into well number seven, lane seven. Look at that, didn't rip anything. I'm impressed with myself. Okay, so now I wanna clear my area out a little bit and I'm going to grab my power source and the cover for this. And I'm going to go ahead and get that on, and then we'll start to run this. Okay, so let me get pause. Okay, so I've got all my materials now that I need. So this is my cover, and you can see the electrical leads that are on this cover. Okay, so I want to make sure, and this has happened a few times, I put black to black, negative to negative, and red to red, positive to positive. If I do the reverse, if I put the cover on the opposite direction, oh, our DNA is going to run the wrong way, right off the top of the gel. We want it to run down the gel towards the positive electrode. So again, I'm going to put black to black and red to red. Okay. And I'm going to double check everything. Okay. And then as I plug this in, here's my power source right here. That's plugged in already. Now I'm going to plug my leads into my power source. And again, this is going to supply current. I'm just going to move this a little bit. Okay, again, I'm going to do black to black and red to red. I've had students a couple times do the opposite, and um, we've had some bad, bad results. I've got it on high, and now I'm just going to flip the power switch. And what I should see, and I do, are bubbles at the negative electrode. I don't know if you can see those or not, but I see them. So that means that my gel is starting to run. I'm going to let this go. It's going to take about 45 minutes, I'd say. And so my DNA is going to run from the well that I put it in. It's going to run down the gel. Remember, the smaller the fragment, the farther it migrates. And I'm going to stop running my gel when my loading dye, I'm going to see a blue line going down my gel, when that loading dye gets oh, about a half an inch, quarter of an inch from the edge of the gel. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Okay, so that concludes... Uh, this video. Um, the next one will be what to do with our gels when the um, when it's done running, when the electrophoresis part of this is finished. Okay, so go ahead and watch that next video.